every pilot's like, what do you mean, seriously Davies? I'm like, yeah, well, I thought it looked better than it did. If I bought now, I'm in trouble. Okay, and welcome back to Fast Jet Performance then. My name is Tim Davies, and today we are in my little Hawk. Um, I'll see what it looks like for the control tower, shall we? At uh, RAF Valley, and let me have a look, see if I can get that up for you. So I'm trying to use, to, I'm trying to record with OBS here, picture in picture, so you guys can see uh, where I am. Let's have a look. So shift, da, 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 da. Oh, none of these are working now. Oh, there we go, these keys are working, aren't they? Having a look around the cockpit, it's pretty cool, but my outside view keys are, don't seem to be Aha, there we are. Right, you can see a couple of swinging messengers of death down there and this crazy pilot, you know, try and get airborne. This is a funny guy. This guy's gonna drive up here, guys. I think he's gonna enter here and he's gonna drive down into my face. I'm not joking, oh, he's gonna run into a tornado first. Oh, man. So this is us here. And look, it's a poor weather day. I'm gonna try and find some low level to fly in. Uh, and I wanna talk to you about low level options and all sorts of things, okay? We might have to sit here for a bit, get the jet ready, because I swear, I'm pretty sure, he's gonna come over to here, turn around and drive into us. So whilst we're doing that, we're talking about takeoff emergency briefs and things like that, okay? I might try and just get off the runway quickly first. Right, so we know the jet then very well, it looks like this. I mean, there are some buttons I need to press, I need to put on. Uh, this crazy fool is gonna, uh, he's gonna come down here. So let me just, what I'm gonna do now is on this side of the runway, what we can do is we just go over here, we spin around and we just sit there, okay? So we just do that, and I'll be speaking to, if I'm on the runway, I'm speaking to Tower, uh, Tower Victor 6-1. I'm just gonna vacate the runway for two mics. Victor 6-1, Roger. What's that, guys, not using VR? No, not using VR, because you don't like it. Oh, I don't like VR, I don't like VR. Right, guys, I'm gonna get out of, I'm just gonna turn around here, then I'll just speak to you a little bit. I'm not gonna leave this window open the whole time of me in, in the thing, I'm not gonna do that. Right, there we go, stop, parking brake on, and you would, so it's not on, is it? You would check the pressures were well, up here. You'd confirm those pressures. Right, looks like we've got something here, doesn't it? Let me just see then. So, all right, look, um, what we're gonna do today is get air one in poor weather. We're gonna update our emergencies brief. We're gonna talk about generator captions as well uh, on takeoff because now we do have a really significant issue. The MESAR here at Valley, the weather report, I've got it on my phone for you guys, is, um, let's have a look. It's on the phone on the phone. It is pretty horrible up there, to be honest. It's, um, I read the raw meta. There's two, isn't there? There's one where they kind of break it out for you, and then there's one that's raw. Uh, I, I, it's my pilot brain. I have to read the raw one. I don't know why. So, Valley, Echo, Golf, Oscar, Victor, then. Um, let's have a look. It's, it's done at uh, 12 feet, about 10 to 2. Yeah, fine. So, it's about 40 minutes ago. Um, wind is 23013 knots. We are off runway 19. It's a right hand runway, circus to the right. But the wind now is off to the right hand side, isn't it? So, if we're going to set the jet up down here, which we'll do um, with that information when we do the takeoff emergencies brief, I know the wind is going to be slightly from the right hand side. That will affect any kind of takeoff emergencies that I have. I'm not going to have an alternate runway to, to go from today. This is normal weather at Valley, by the way. We do fly like this. We used to. I don't fly anymore. Um, so it's uh, the visibility is quite down, 2,300 meters uh, drizzle, broken at 100, overcast at two. Yeah, so 10, 20, 1, 0, 2, 0 for the QFE, which is good. And it's becoming better. No, it's not. It's, well, it's red becoming white, so I doubt there's any flying today. You can get airborne in a red condition on the runway if you speak to the station commander first, because you're not going to be able to get back in. You've got to have a diversion within a certain, uh, I think it's 100 miles, things like that. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> obviously, we're gonna try this out. And uh, I would like to say thank you for supporting the channel. A lot of people are subscribing up to Patreon in the basic or the advanced groups. And of course, you'll get advanced videos like this. They'll come out like early for you guys. Um, I'll give you the links, unlist them for a couple of days and then they'll go live, obviously. Also extra live streams, things like that. So really thank you for, the, um, for subscribing on Patreon. And what it allows me to do is buy green screens. Like behind me now is a green screen. You can't see it because it's green. I've got a chroma key mapping on it and I've got lights up now. So hopefully it makes the experience a little bit better for you. Um, choo choo, there's the train. Uh, what did happen to that little jet, by the way? Where's that crazy fool? Where'd he go then? Did he go past? Did I miss him? Maybe he got airborne. Oh, if he's airborne in this, he is in a world of trouble. Le Monde de Pain. Uh, okay, so we've got to do pre-takeoffs, haven't we? So I'll stay with stud two, doesn't matter. I'm on with tower, doesn't matter, I'm happy. Uh, so we start off, remember, what we talked about then. We have to go zero on the trim. 
neutral neutral on these two trims down here fuel pump would be on by now pito on anti-skid is on then we go over here we go fuel sufficient for well it would be 1300 but we got 950 that's fine for us today flaps are at mid harness to tilt and lock seats alive and we'll also put these um, lights up to white now that's not on uh land taxi light on will go on if you, if you as you roll onto the runway i'll turn it off for now those both are going to be up i'll be stalking on talking on uhf i believe that's uhf and i'll be listening so i'm listening on both uhf and vhf and i'll be on both here which means i can listen to guard as well which is our frequency um the the frequency we speak to with sonic military if we need anything that should be on stud two so we're pretty much ready to go and in the takeoff merchants brief i'll adjust certain other bits depending on the weather of the day so we say then Runway 19, so I'll bug that on 19 now so we know it's runway we are on. In case it doesn't matter really whether it's 19 or, oh, it does actually for this, so I'm sorry, I was thinking about something else. Runway 19, so I'll go for 193, I think the heading is, unless it's changed, might have changed. That would do us. And then the bug will go onto the runway I'll turn onto should I have a major snag. Today, I'm going to be in cloud. I won't be having an alternate runway. So what I'm going to do is put it onto the reciprocal. And that's the heading I'm going to fly on with engine, fa with, not engine failure. I'll be in the sea. That's the heading I'm going to fly on if I get myself into trouble. Uh, and I want to start positioning back for this runway for a precision, precision approach, radar approach. So it was 1020. 1020. There we go. On main and standby. So we'll say that up to 90 knots, we're going to board for anything. Uh, I've got a, well, apologies, I've got a runway that's 5,300 metres. It's not too bad. It looks dry for the moment. Weather is poor. Up to 90 knots, saying we're bought for anything. 90 through gear selected up are bought, and I'll land back on this runway. High speed barrier engagement for a top line red. Remember what we said about this, guys? A top line red are these here. Um, red, uh, let's have red hide, um, hide oil surge. I forget surge as well. So top line red, red hide oil surge. And a gen caption today, this one here, I'll also land back on, okay? Any of the top line or this, I'm landing back on. But if I'm going for a high-speed barrier, I will not enter it with a fire or start. That's a fire, that's a start, okay? Because I'll burn to death. So from, and what, what other thing, guys, today, I'm going to get my gear traveling as soon as possible because what that does, that takes out one of my options today, all right? So if I get my gear traveling straight away, as soon as I'm airborne, positive rate climb one or two, gear travels. Now, if I have, have, an, engine, if I have an engine fail, I'm ejecting, aren't I? Yeah, that's the only thing I'm doing, I'm ejecting. Okay, start doing the backstroke. So if I don't have my gear traveling, if my gear is still down and I have an engine failure, I've got to land back on. I don't want to do that today. I don't want to go into the barrier with enough speed. So um, I, I'm going to get airborne, positive rate climb, gear travels, flap travels. Now any, now any engine failure, I'm out. So we say from gear travels in through to, th to 250 knots, if I do have an engine failure um, today, I'm probably just going to be ejecting because I have no way of getting back. 250 really above, again, I'm stuck, I'm ejecting. So anything really above gear traveling with engine snags, um, I am on an ejection condition today. And if I am IMC at this point, I'll come down to 500 feet on the standby altimeter here and I'll eject to 500 feet if I can't relight the engine. If I am trying to relight the engine, guys, I'm doing it down here with this and this, okay? But when that says 500 feet, okay, you're getting out of that jet. The barrier speed for this runway today at the end here is 75 knots. Sometimes on high wind days, it is a high wind days, they will put the barrier down. They can't have it up. Um, but today we'll simulate we have it up, all right? And the wind, as I said, 230, 15 knots. So it's coming about 40 degrees off the nose here. Um, so I'll, take, I'll still take about 85 with 1,000 to go. 85 knots with 1,000 to go into that barrier, else I'm ejecting. Right, good. It would be to tower, but I'm on tower already. Another choo-choo. Uh, the train is crossing, by the way, and you're approaching this runway. You have to go around because it scares the passengers. It's genuine. Right, I'm going to get out of the cockpit, guys, and um, I'll, let you, I'll let you come flying. Right, I'm a ghost. Tell me in the comments, by the way. Uh, subscribe, please. You know, whack that like button, notification bell. Tell me in the comments if uh, this is a style that works for you with this picture-in-picture -picture and stuff. Right, I've got all the views mapped anyway, so I need to get track IR or something. So let's say uh, pre-takeoffs, and we've done those. Uh, tower, so Valley Tower, Victor 6-1, ready for departure. Victor 6-1, line up, line up, Victor 6-1. Now it's line up only, guys. What I would do here is not have my clock up. My clock would be laid down for this, because that means I have not been given permission to, um, to take off. Before I go on the runway, though, approach path is clear. Always say that. And these are my own checks. Approach path is clear. This is what, these are my own that I run through. You've got to do slam checks, guys, in this little aeroplane, this little hawk. Notice I'm using all the runway. 
Runway behind you is runway lost, okay? Runway, all we'll use that. Hold it on the toe brakes, do not use the parking brake. You will forget, you will forget. Slam, squawk on here, I'll be squawking whenever they want me to. Lights are here, land light comes on now. Altimetry is here, uh, 1020 set main is standby and mass is live. Check these go out. My own checks then, approach pass was clear. Half, or mid flap I have, half flaps are T2, sorry. Seats are live, negative clearance. Uh, Victor 6-1, uh, clear takeoff. Takeoff, Victor 6-1. That clock would now come up, guys. We have got it. Barrier 85 with a thousand to go, just to rebrief myself. Look out there, make sure that trim's back so the fuel control unit is working and rolling. Lead with rudder, that's it, and then the brakes if you need them. So that's full left rudder now with a bit of brake. That's right, full left rudder, a little bit of brake. Approaching 90 knots. Nose wheel can start to come off now. A bit of right air alarm there, just counteract the wind. Looking for 120. Looking for 120, there we go. Positive climb. Want to see those altimeters move? Good. Gear travels, flap travel. Eight to ten. Eight to ten. That is windy. It's a bit of a windy day here today. Gears up by 200. Flaps up by 200. Panel is clear. Victor 6-1 to radar. Victor 6-1. Right. Before you start messing around with frequencies and stuff, set and hold and trim out that attitude. Power attitude and trim for performance, guys. That's nicely trimmed. No rush to get on the radar. Sub three. Valley radar, Victor 6-1 in the climb. Uh, Victor 6-1, uh, request your intentions. Uh, Victor 6 one looking for a climb up to flight level 70, please, and I'll look for a cloud break into Delta Zero 201. Uh, roger that, Victor 6 one and confirm your score. Roger, Victor 6 one standby. Now, guys, you want to look down here. Just make sure that you've turned the squawk on. Get your head back on the instruments. We're going to climb at 350 knots up to flight level 70. I don't change it until transition altitude. So I'll stay on the QFE until I get to 3,000 feet, which is transition altitude, and then we can change it. There is no way today I'm getting back in the valley, is there? 3,000 then, so 1013. On both, it's not easy. Bring back VR, bring back VR. 1013, four for seven. Uh, Victor 6-1, uh, we see a score. Uh, Victor 6-1, Roger. 350 knots. And then I'll pause it up here, guys, and we'll talk about options, okay? And I'll get back into the cockpit. I'll be your little instructor jumping back in. As I do break out the cloud, though, notice the cloud tops, so about four or five for me. Have a good look around, because we might have other players up here. Keep that climb coming, Davies, come on. So set, trim, nice, five. It's a shame with X-Plane, really. We don't do, they don't do any instrument approaches or instrument aids. I think DCS does. Everyone wants me to go to DCS, and I will, guys. DCS is a bit more complicated than X-Plane, and I have fly types of aircraft that I don't, you know, I mean, like, I'm the Harry I'm reasonably familiar with. I wasn't a Harrier pilot, I was a Tornado pilot, but I, I, I can work the Harrier um, stuff because it was very similar to the T2, the way the head-up display worked. Leveling at 7-0. There you go. Put the ball on the line, leave the power about 90, that should settle, and now you're trimming. And you'll have to look at that ball, and I'll just help you here a little bit. So 90% initially. Look at, the, look at the VSI, there you go, vertical speed indicator down here, all right? That should be on, that should be on zero. It's hard to hike keep in this. It's a bit easier in the actual jet. 87, not 87% really, that, that might work. Power, it's a bit different in here. 56.1 level, flight level 70. 56.1. And 56.1 is looking for a uh, cloud break uh, over the sea into Delta 201, looking for a low low entry point on the west coast. Uh, Victor 61, Roger, let me know when you're ready for descent. Roger 61, if you can let me know when um, I've got feet wet, please. 61, Roger. What that means is they're going to now tell me on my map when I'm past this here, Klim Peninsula, into this area here, and, um, and they're basically going to help me out. Now, I should have had a deconfliction service there. I can't remember the last one or not, because it's only in cloud for a little bit, but I will be under probably a traffic service now, and under a traffic service, I just have to tell them where I'm coming. So traffic service, let's talk about those two services, shall we? It's gonna pause for a second. Right, let's get back into here. Hey guys, back in your cockpit. Right, look, there are three different types of services you can have. Basic, traffic, deconfliction. It's all to do with being IMC, okay? Instrument met conditions. Now, if I take a basic service, um, I should be Victor Mike, because I, I should be flying around VFR and I'll just be told of other aircraft. And normally I might have to ask about other aircraft as well. If I take a, um, Traffic service, that was, all, that was always like the old radio information service for the old school pilots like myself. Um, and we used to say, take a risk, take a risk. What that means is they're only going to tell you about traffic um, once, really, and then they don't have to tell you again. So up here, they might say, um, Tim, you've got some traffic right one o'clock, uh, about 10 miles. 
uh, at say flight level eight zero descending. You know, it's coming towards me, right? So and I'm like, Roger, that looking, and I'm looking. Now I've got to ask them now for an update on that traffic. They don't have to give me an update at all. And um, if I was under a deconfliction service or what used to be the radar advisory service, you've got to fly with T guys. This is the difference, isn't it? You've got to fly with T. I mean, I never used to fly with T when I, when I was a pilot in the Air Force because I didn't have any cup holders. I am making a jet for Aerolist though. It is going to have cup, uh, cup holders. It's going to have cup holders because I know some of my boys at Valley, you know, I'm, I'm doing them a favor. When they get my jet on the flight line there, they'll be able to get in with a flask of tea and they'll be able to say, Tim is hooking us up, all right? So a deconfliction service is, um, uh, they, they, will compl- they, will, they will deconflict you for other traffic and they will move you around the sky. Here, with the traffic service, I just tell them what I'm, I say, I'm coming right now. I'm about, I'm about to say, coming right now onto about 160. And they'll say, Roger that, I'll come right into 160. Right, let's... Um, Let's fly. What our intentions are is to get down into 201, then descend down to 500 feet over the sea on the regional pressure setting, which is going to be about 1022 today. See whether we're visual with the sea. If we are, we can then look to work on the west coast. If we're not visual, then we'll just climb back up again, push onto the northern plain, uh, northern area of valley, and see whether we can get in there somewhere. Okay, it's not a nice day at valley at the moment. I use real world weather. Okay, guys, uh, have your jet back. So, 7-0, looks like I might be going into some weather here. It doesn't matter either way. I'm just going to take that weather. I don't care because I'm not looking for anything special. And then I'm going to keep the head out of the cockpit, though, guys, obviously. And this, this helps you as well. If you're higher, it's much easier to find other areas where you might be able to look in. But we are going to go to low level soon, as you can see. So, Victor 6-1 coming left onto 1-5-0. Victor 6-1, Roger. Keep that power up there about 90 something will help us so on roll out then what am i going to do check dead wing yes i'll check dead wing because that's where dead people live 150 give it some anticipation flight path is clear dead wing is clear right let's have a look i need to be divergent from the coast and i will be divergent from the coast above five miles so i am going to descend on this heading uh victor 61 descent in 60 seconds please Victor 61 roger Vic 61, uh, set 1022, 1022, Vic 6-1. They don't really care what height I fly at now when I've set this, so I'll just pick 7,000 again. Right, pre descent checks. Fuel is good, 900 instruments are rectum synchronized. Radios, I'm on side 3, altimetry is set, and demist is not selected. So I'll do, I'll do my low level checks when I'm actually at low level. Happy with that. Uh, Victor 61, uh, you are five miles south of the Klim Peninsula. On this heading, happy for you to descend at your discretion to Victor Mike. Um, call visual below. Victor 61, Roger. Right, guys, I'm going to use an 80%, uh, 10 degrees nose down, air brake descent. So, oh, 80%, crikey. In the descent, then. I've got my checks done. Air brake travels. This is because it's going to shorten my descent, okay? 80% debut, it's about there. Count it down. Six for 500. There's no rad out on this aeroplane, no radar out on this aeroplane. Five for six, 500, sorry, for 500 feet. Four for 500 feet to level, so not to go further. Three for 500 feet, sort the attitude out, Davies, come on. 2,000 for 500 feet. It looks like uh, I am about to get visual below, which is nice. Keep your head in there, come on, keep going down. Yep, oh nice, I'm actually visual below. And whilst I am high, I'm gonna keep it a bit high now because I'm, I can then talk to, Everett uh, Travels, Everett uh, indicates in, I'm gonna to talk to Radar. Uh, radar, Victor 6-1 is uh, Victor Mike below, happy to go en route. Uh, Victor 6-1, en route, Squawk 7,000. En route, 7,000, Victor 6-1. Okay guys, uh, I wasn't expecting it to be nice down here, and it is, so we can probably get something in on the uh, Western Plain at the moment. So I'm just going to tour around about 1,000 feet at the moment. Flight path is good. Dead wing is good. And we'll get some low-level checks done. Let's see if I can find an entry point for you. 360 knots. And I'm going to use 1,000 feet as a bit of a baseline for me to keep me safe here because it's very easy to fly over the sea. If you want to know about that, speak to 736 down at um, Cold Rose. Uh, they do it all the time. Not flying into the sea. They, they, do, um, they fly without a radar altimeter over the sea all the time. Visually judged. Very impressive. Right, guys. So we've got an area up here I think I might be able to go in at. Let me see what it is. Might want to go in a bit lower than that, Davies, as in, well, let me see, just see whether, I'm trying to push through to Barla, something like that for you guys. There's Scooby-Doo here. Yeah, if I come in here, I might be able to work up here, past to Barla. If I get to Barla, I don't think we'll be able to get through the loop today, not without a bore. 
So I'm going to try and get up to Barla, see if we can work on the Northern Plain. So I need to accelerate 420 knots and I need to start descending. So as you can see, I already have, because I've been busy looking at a map. You've got to be very careful of that, especially without rad out. Accelerating 420, low level checks then, VLAR STs. So visor is down, lights are on. That I need. Um, altimeters uh, 1022 set main and standby. Radio stud 20, gone on route. It's actually stud 26, it's not mapped on here, but I'll go stud 20. Um, Squawk 7001 and time, there'd be a clock, and I'd write a time down at the low level entry so that I know what time. Looks, does it look fit? It's like, yeah, that's GR4 fit, mate. All right, in. GR4 pilot. Right, now, bird strike is a huge risk today, okay? Dead wing. Because birds don't hold an instrument rating, as you know. And uh, because they don't hold a rating, they tend to fly Victor Mike only in the same piece of sky as us. Now, notice I'm not like running around 250 feet. I'm like, ah, chill, dude, chill. There's no, there's no rush, mate. There's no rush. I will get a bit lower in a minute. But all you sim pilots racing around low level, you're like, that doesn't happen like that. Be at 100 feet when you're being shot at. The rest of the time, give yourself capacity. Look, I can see green air ahead, which is good. Dead wing, I can see green air. People might drop into this valley from the north. If this valley is good for me, it's good for other people, guys. But it means everyone's going to come play in it. Don't let that speed get low. I'll show you the loop entrance. I'm not going around the loop today, I don't think. Flight path's good. Dead wing's good. That's the loop entrance. We might better get around the loop. Does the exit look clear? Yeah, let's see if we can get around the loop then, shall we? Let me just have a look. All right, let's see if we can... Okay, let's see if we can get around the loop. And then we'll go up to Barla. Do a loop once. Okay, come on. 4G at low level, Davies. 4G, don't under G. For students under g or under speed like I am, you hit them. Not physically... Well, it should be hit because it's how you die. That's the end. that's the ex exit. That's the exit, Davies. Can't see. Why can't I fly in VR? Oh, we don't like VR. It's not nice enough. The picture's not nice. What are we bringing? Who are we bringing up? What kind of generation are we bringing up that are worried about pictures? Right, dead wing's good, guys. It's not about the pictures. It's not about how pretty something looks. Jeez, it's about the quality of the information you're getting out of it. So hello to photographers on here. So it looks like we are going to get around today. Okay, there's the photogs down there. Hey guys, what's going on? Not too much. How you doing, Tim? Good, mate. Right, stick on the valley here on this side because we're going to make a left turn. Control the speed. We're going to go left turn into there. Looks clear. 4G for the turn. Hard. This is the problem with this, isn't it? Because I can't see the accelerometer. Why? Because you won't let me use VR. Oh, but we don't like it because I can't see things. Right, anyway, I think I'll probably try and get one of those track IR things. Also, guys, when I am using VR, for me, it, it really helps. When I was doing that tornado video and I was on the, I was on the West Coast, I think it was, um, it was like being in the tornado on the West Coast, and I'm not even joking. It was the same weather decisions. It was everything. You know, I've got to speak to Inverness. I've got to go through Tain. I've got to do all these things. Um, it really brings it back. And when I finished that flight, you know, I was like, I'm a sweat on. You know, it was like, that was, that was a bit of work there. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look. Okay, clear out to the right, so now I know no one's coming in. Clear front, clear left, make that turn. Come on, make the turn. Keep the breathing, squeeze the legs, 4G, squeeze the legs. 4G, squeeze the legs. Squeeze the legs, a big turn this one. Squeeze the legs. People drop into this all the time from out to the south. So when you roll out now, flight path's good. Dead wing's good. All that area there, people are coming in at, okay? So other aircraft are dropping into the loop, having worked down south. And I think actually, to be honest, down south looks you know, kind of fit. I'm not saying fit all events, just fit. When we come out of the loop, I'll position us up towards Barla, and then we'll do a picture in picture again, guys, and I'll just talk you through some stuff. Some stuff that I'm thinking. Dead wing, good. Look, because all up this area here, people come in. So you've got to be really careful. 4G. Fuel's good at 900 then, oxygen's good, engine is, the, uh, is matching what I expect it to be, and location, we know where we are in the loop, in poor weather. If I do abort, by the way, here, we probably would abort on the Northern Plain, um, we'll try and go through the A5 pass. I'll be aborting up to 5,600 feet, which is safety altitude here. It's uh, 2,000 feet above the highest point, that's above 3,000 feet, and that's Mount Snowden. I still, I still think you get a better, more realistic 
um, flying with, for me and for you guys, with uh, VR, by the way, guys. So I will probably go back onto that. Right, here's on the right-hand side, nice. Now, 4G, that's it, around the corner, because I just don't know whether I'm going to fly into the opposite hill now. There you go, without VR. So I've got to look back in, am I? Okay, yeah, flight path's good. And it also allows you to see how far away you are from the coastline. That speed is incredibly dangerous, okay? So I need to really, it's not the same in the jet. It's, they're, they're remodeling this airplane, just flight. They're gonna release a third version. They're, they're listening to my complaints. So really you need, well, I'm probably gonna to have to speak to them, aren't I, to be honest. Used to flash trucks on this, flash trucks coming down with the landing light, used to flash them. The photographers are up here. Hey guys, up there, what's going on? Not too much. Right, now have a really great look over here. No one's coming up, got green air, see Barla, 4G. 4G, 4G, I've got full power on. Don't let the jet get slow. 4G, come on. 4G, yeah, descending into trees, always bad. Come on, that's it. Now let's roll out then. Dead wing's clear. Weather ahead looks pretty good. Now this is not a flowed valley. What that means is jets can come both ways. So my head now would be down here and over here. And I'll be looking through this bit. I'll be bending my head around, you know what I mean? To try and look out there because it's like, yeah, I've got to have a look, you know what I mean? Really moving the head around the cockpit. Right, let's just, let's just pause it here. Get that speed under control, Davies. It looks like it's getting a bit worse up there, doesn't it? Don't really want to drag this one out today for you guys, but um, just want to kind of point out then, always looking for green air, clear air. We're going to come up here, Lake Barlow, and then we're going to try and find something called Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo Lake, because it looks like Scooby-Doo. From there, we'll head 330 to see whether we can come through the A5 pass. Might have to abort at some point. And if we do abort, it's pretty standard. If I do abort, I go heads in, full power, um, and I'm looking at the central instrument here, what's called the AI, and then at the big you know, thing in the middle that you can see, which is this thing here. Then I will uh, roll wings level, 4G, pull the stick back, 4G, 4G, 4G to 30 degrees nose up, and I'll hold that attitude until I get the safety altitude, 5, 6, and then I'll roll, um, and I'll just sort the rest of it out. Just so you know, that's what an abort's gonna be. Right, have your cockpit back. So, Tell me if you like in the comments, guys. Tell me if this is working for you. It might not be working for you. You might be like, I don't like you being picture in picture. I'm not going to send you any money to buy a green screen again. I want my money back. I'll tell you what, it adds up. When you start buying all this kit, lamps, you know, microphones, everything. And I coach people. I, I run, um, I run uh, the Spin Recovery Program is my program. It's a 12-week program. Six men at a time for men in transition. Courses have already gone through it. They get a lot out of it, a lot out of it. And uh, we do it every week for six weeks, uh, 12 weeks, apologies, 12 weeks. And uh, that, you know, so I have various revenue streams. And, and, and of course, this is, uh, you know, you, you sending me money and whatever, I can buy cameras and help you out and give you some of those lessons I teach in the spin recovery. And I can give you some of these lessons here about planning. I am going to do a video pretty soon on an aviation psychologist who, um, uh, I once heard about, I'm going to do a reaction video on that, okay? Because I'll tell you why pilots are all the same. And it's a not a great thing to be all the same as a pilot. And there's work you're going to have to do when you stop being a pilot. Clear. And that work will need to get done. And some, I take pilots through that work as well. So if you have weather in front of you like this, guys, make a decision early. Step up to the base of the clouds like this. How much weather have I, good? Have I got? Yes, I've got some height. I will be able to get through there. I, yeah, there's Scooby-Doo. So let's go through Scooby-Doo, and then I'm going to fly 330 to the A5 pass. There's no way I'm getting back in the valley, I don't think. From above, by the way, this looks like Scooby-Doo. Let me just see if I can get a map up for you. There we go. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? Okay. Right, 330, probably 325. Every pilot knows this. If you fly 330 from here, it's going to get you to the A5, A5 pass depending on the weather, of course, depending on the wind. But we're gonna fly at about 320, so I expect 320, 325. We're trying to go through the A5 pass. I think weather's gonna come in for us at some point, guys. You need, you need to have uh, about 750 foot cloud base, and it's really hard to tell because, of course, we're not over the sea, are we? So you just have to kind of, you know, you can do it with a rad out in the aeroplane. I remember operating down by Shobden once with a 
some really good pilots. There was me in the jet, there was my senior QFI, and then there was, I think, our CFS agent also. Really qualified, highly qualified guys, all teaching a bounce sortie, an evasion sortie, um, and with some students. And uh, weather like this, horrendous. Um, we're just literally flying around Shobden, trying to avoid Shobden, the airfield, um, which is a bit of a nightmare. And eventually, we're obviously pushing all the boundaries, weather that we possibly could, try and get the sortie in for these guys that are supposed to graduate. And eventually, they bounce. Uh, a good guy, a good guy. He said, guys, should we stop this? And um, there's A5 there. And I was like, yes, good call. And I apologized to him later and said, I'm so sorry, mate. I said, look, I was mixed up in that. I said, I was just so deep into it, which is something I'm not actually doing. I'm not deep into the A5 pass yet because I'm just struggling to get in. Right, here we are. I said, I was too busy teaching, mate. I said, I'm so glad you were there to, to, help, to hook us up because, um, you know, sometimes you need to be told, uh, we need to be told when to stop. Right, it's great. I can fly with tea. You can stop the video, have a cup of tea. I mean, that's very different from the job I did, isn't it? Very different from the job I did. My brother used to drink tea, but he was a Hercules pilot. Right, let's, let's fly through day five then. A5 pass. Speed needs to be held high on this. Fuel then is about 850. It's good for recovery for us today. And in anticipation, I would be calling out on stud 26 and telling people where I am, but I always forgot. I forgot in real life as well. So I'm going to call, put stud 5 on because the next thing I'm going to do when I come out of this is uh, call up approach. Got the course bar in the right place for the runway. And you've got to see green air, guys. You've got to see green air. Get your head around this thing. Get your head out. Get your head out. Yeah, it looks like I've got a way through there. So it looks like I've got a way through, okay? All right, so I want to be, oh, this is horrendous. Every pilot is like, what do you mean? Seriously, Davies? I'm like, yeah, well, I thought it looked better than it did. If I bought now, I'm in trouble, guys, because I've got Snowden ahead of me. So I need to get down in that, get down in there, get down in there, get down in there. Yo. Oh, you can't see it, but I, every pilot in the world is like, yeah, you, you push the boundary there, Davies. I'm like, you are absolutely right. Snowden is in that cloud right there. And it's, it's 3,600 foot tall. That was horrific. So really, in real life, you can tell better whether you can get through there. But anyway, so guys, we're going to cruise out 360 knots and back in the valley. Looks like it might have lifted a little bit. Um, if not, it might be able to make Mona. So I'll climb up, see if I can get 2,000 feet. Set the QFE 1020. Didn't get an abort in, did we? Doesn't matter, we can always cover an abort later on. But if I abort now, there's probably no chance of me getting down again. Uh, Valley Approach, 50 Yankees Tango 6 1 uh, for a visual recovery from the A5 pass. Uh, Victor 6 1, Skork, um, uh, Skork. Let's have a look. Skork Ident is the word I'm looking for. And then what you do is you reach down here and you press a button and it starts flashing on their screen. Uh, but it's 6-1 identified. Um, we are on runway 19 right hand one, set to QFE 1020. Uh, 19 right hand 1020. Have you got the, um, the ATIS 6-1? Uh, negative. Uh, Roger, so uh, we are currently green. And they make up some stuff as well. And I'll be like, okay, cool. Might be out. If it's lifting, guys, which it might well be lifting, because this is real world weather, it could be okay. Now, I'm going to come to the north of the field here. North of the field, past Mona and then come in this way for one nine. And I might try and do a straight in for you, which is one nine from about here maybe. Um, but I don't know, because uh, this cloud could be forcing me a bit lower than I want to be. Anyway, if you want to subscribe, hit the notification bell, get some live streams up guys. Um, and uh, we'll do some more of this. This is more of a test to see whether the picture in picture works. I did one of these earlier and it, it didn't work. Uh, I've been playing with some settings and there's a lot of work to do online. It's supposed to be below 360 on the island, guys, so I'm just going to try and sort that with air brake now. So below 2,000 feet, you would be about 360. Technically, I'm in the low flying air at the moment. Speed control today is typically poor. I think it's getting worse out there. I don't know whether we can get into Valley. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll be a thousand feet. Anything below 2000 feet is in the low flying area, but I am booked in anyway. I'll be a thousand feet and I'll see whether I can see what it looks like from a thousand. Oh, come on. I think it's coming right down, isn't it? Right. I'll throttle back then. I'm going to try and see whether 
I can make this. Oh yeah, this is a great way of taking birds. Fly across a reservoir. Man, I really thought we were going to get in the valley. Okay, we have to abort. Full power, wings level, 4G, <laughs> 30 degrees. Idiot, aborting, hold 30 degrees. Stare at that, stare at it, don't do anything else. Victor 6-1 is aborting at a low level in the climb. Uh, Victor 6-1, roger. Oh man, that just closed right in. I'm not going to be able to get in, I might have to go to Mona. Right, over bank, 10 degrees, roll back. All uh, right, so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'll leave the power on. <sighs> Let's have a look, because I've got to land this jet for you, so it's a bit of rubbish thought, isn't it? Uh, what I'll try and do is come down here, just over the sea, and just see whether I can sneak into Valley to get a circuit in, and we know if we can't, and if not, I'll go to Mona, okay? So, obviously, I'll be on a radar recovery for real, for real. In fact, let's pretend Valley's just had a, um, a black runway and they asked me to go to Mona. Uh, Victor 6-1, can you make your approach into Mona, please, and shut down there. We've had a, um, we've had a uh, high speed abort on the runway and there's tired debris all over the place. Uh, roger that, uh, absolutely. Um, can you feed me in, please, for a, a visual? Uh, roger that, this is a visual into runway 22 RF Mona. And then we set a different QFE. Set something like 1024, probably, I can't remember, really. Set 1024, runway 22 RF Mona. One, two, two, four, from me, two, two. And Victor, six, one, coming right onto east. Victor, six, one. So what we can do then, I'll get descent down over the sea, five and a feet. And Victor, six, one, will be looking for a descent uh, over the sea, down to five and a feet. Victor, six, one, Roger. I think one, four, zero is probably a better heading. Let's have a look. Yes, VR would be nice. Right, I need to be divergent from that coastline, guys. So I need to come left onto about east. Oh, sort your head right out. Right, 300 knots will be good enough for me else it's gonna to happen too quickly. East, Davies, and right. And uh, approach, can you confirm a feet wet, please? You are feet wet, happy for descent. Call Victor Mike below. Descending, Victor 6-1, to five and a feet, 1024. Victor 6-1. I wouldn't really be descending on Mona's QFE for this descent, guys. I'll go back to the RPS for five and a feet, okay? Honestly, there's no map in the jet for the, uh, for the T1. They have to use um, a sky map. Five in the descent for 500 to level. Four for 500 to level. Three for 500 to level. Come on. Keep your head in, head in the cockpit. Two for 500, head in the cockpit. Outside picture looks good. Keep the head on the altimeter because you can't see. One, nine, eight, seven, power, six, 500 feet, still pretty scotchy down here, isn't it? 300 knots, I'm just gonna hold 300 knots. Oh man, I gotta try and, how am I gonna get in a Mona? I thought the weather was looking all right. All right, come south. Uh, Victor 6-1 is, uh, Victor Mike below, coming right onto south for Mona. Uh, Victor 6-1, Roger. Oh, I don't know what happened there, sorry. All right, now I'm trying to stalk Mona. Oh, crikey, right. Flight path is good, dead wings good. This is only a test, guys. I just want to see if you, if you like these sort of things, and just let me know, and I'll do more of them. 360 knots is good for down here in case I do need to abort again. Let me just, it's going to happen pretty quick. I don't sort myself out. Map up. Don't fall into the sea, you idiot. Right now, runway 2-2, two so I'm going to want to come right about now. Really, I'm just stalking it. And uh, approach Victor 6-1 in Mona Tower. Victor 6-1, Roger. Right, things I've got to do, guys, in the cockpit here. Flight path is good, dead wing's good. So what I'm doing my bug here, I want to set this down. Every other pilot's like, yeah, you're rushing now, Davies. It's like, yeah, I am rushing. Because the weather's a bit Harry Scotch pigs. I don't think I can get in. Set for downwind heading so I can fly circuit. Other way. 
zero four something that will do. Wind is going to be a bit of a tightener today. Wrong. It's going to be a slackener, which means it's going to push me away from the runway. I come back to about three hundred knots now. Give myself a bit of thinking time. Right. Stud four. Mona Tower, Victor six one join. Uh, Victor six one. Roger. Uh, we are on runway zero four today. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Uh, one zero two four um, and cool picture with the field. Victor six one. Roger. I would like to do a straight in, but chance of me seeing Mona is pretty slim. So let's just have a think about this. Stand by. Um, guys, it gets busy. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> guys, it gets busy. So if it's getting busy and you're running out of options, then just give yourself some time, okay? So bring the throttle back, in knots minimum. That's what I do in this aircraft anyway. Tornado, heavy. That becomes a bit difficult then, but either way, if you're in a tornado, you're, you're rushing along like this, get those wings forward to 25, obviously, we know. Yeah, don't get me wrong, we know, all right? However, I am gonna steam into Mona here like a raging bull if I'm not careful. What I'm gonna try and do, I can, if I get a thousand feet, and it looks like I have got a thousand feet, I'll try a circuit, and it's not gonna be pretty circuit either. So with that bug, uh, I'm probably going to, with the wind at the moment, two, three, zero, it's pretty much on the, on the head actually, isn't it? Of course it is for this. So it's gonna push me down wind pretty quickly. So I'm gonna fly um, a circuit, runway two, two, left hand, uh, to land at RF Mona, and the barrier speed for two, two, I've completely forgotten. Uh, what was it? It was 50 knots for zero four. Someone's shouting at me now, it's him, it's this. Let's pretend it's 100 knots. I have genuinely forgotten. Um, so I can go into that. You know, I'm lightweight. I'll get the braking done and then we'll just stop on the runway there and I'll let you go about your day. Because we've been doing this now for about 41 minutes. I've got things to do, guys. So I'm going to try and fly circuit RF Mona. It's the quickest way to get in, quickest way to land. And a straight in at the moment. We've got no approach aids for Mona. I don't know how far out I am. There's no tack on there at all. So for me to set up for a straight in to Mona is difficult because I have ranges where I need to do things. And I'll do a straight in approach some other time, guys. Let them get out of your cockpit. A straight in approach is what airliners fly, okay? So, um, and actually, airline, it's someone in the comments, someone in the comments were right. Well, actually, Tim, I think you'll find some airliners do fly circuits. Yes, I know you do, crikey, I'm just, you know. So having a go at me, Evan's having a go at me. Right, I'm delicate. So I'll get a visual of that field. So I want to come right a bit. There's the water, yeah, there's the runway. And Victor 6-1, uh, Victor 6-1 initials, Victor 6-1. Now initials is three miles out from the runway center center line, okay? So you can see it there if I zoom in, see it? So literally we're just gonna make an approach to that. So down to a thousand feet, 300 knots, in fact, 360 knots, but I'm actually gonna break it about 300 knots because I'm worried about my speed control on this particular simulator, okay? You can break it three knots if you want to. You just, you know, oh, okay, let's do 360 then. All right, whatever, we'll do everything you wanna do. But it is a shorter runway. So we break it 360 knots. Uh, Victor 6-1, uh, field, uh, their field's clear. Victor 6-1. I can break up 500 feet, actually. That's, that will help me out a lot. Yeah, I think I might set the wrong QFE for this, but we'll see. Oi, oi, tower people. So don't break too early, because you will not be able to get that speed off. And that wind is going to push you downwind. Clear, oh, clear downwind. Nothing downwind. Have a good look. Good. Right. Roll. Pull. 4G. Idle. Air break in that order, in that order. You want to be climbing. Climb, Davies, climb. Fly to the yellow bug, climb, climb. There, there we go. Yellow bug, yellow bug. Well, that was probably the worst break I've ever flown in my life. Some students are like, dude, that was excellent. Right, come on, leave the air break out. Flight path is good then, dead wing is good. What's my spacing like? Well, I'm a bit out, aren't I? Come on, keep it coming. Keep it coming around. Speed below 200, there. Air brake. Travels in, indicates in, gear travels. Half uh, fuel is for a 118 knots approach. Half mid flap travels. Three goons indicating, mid flap indicating, three for two, two below 10. Look at that. I didn't call the brake. Big 6 1, uh, late brake land. Big 6 1, 150, that looks good for me. I'm a bit wide. Every pilot in the world's going, dude, you are a bit wide. Oh, I was a tornado pilot. I blame the wind of the day, and I'm 1200 feet. Oh. Luckily, this is not, not instructional, it's educational, because everyone's like, what are you doing? I can't even see the runway, so you know, think about that. Right, half around the turn, I want to be 650, so I'm actually high. Probably the worst circuit I've ever flown on, a, on this sim, or in real life ever. 
130 on rollout. Happy with that. Oh, not happy 130. I would go around again, guys, but I've got I've got to go for a drive. So Vic 61 final get down. Vic 61 clear land. Just land 61. 130 for 118 numbers speed. Barrier was about 100 knots, I think. Numbers speed. Drive it in, Davies. Drive it in. I'll sort these. I'll sort the. I'll practice some circuits, guys. Okay. Check. And I would have checked late for brakes. There we go. Just let it slow down. And I, I sometimes just check the brake pressures down here, make sure they, they are they are pumping around, and you can see them down there. Pump, 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 pump. That's good. Right. So to be honest, guys, I kind of rushed that approach a little bit, and that's probably quite poor. But I hope you understand that it's um, you know, I do have things to do, unfortunately. Right. Mass. And then let's get off the runway. And I don't know what the ground frequency is for Mona because we never go here. So what I would do is I just say, can you give me the ground freak? And they go. Uh, Victor 61 active vacated to ground. Could you give me the frequency, please? Roger that. Uh, stay with me on stud four. Oh, Roger that. And if actually 61, we're just prepping your area. Do you want to shut down there? Oh, happy. I'll shut down. I'll just shut down here. 61. Guys, I am going to shut down here. I'll just get picture in picture for you real, real quick. Um, looking at the tower. It's a nice, pretty place to look down, isn't it? Right here, parking brake should go on. It doesn't in this aircraft, does it? Ah, there, it is on. Good. Good. And what I'll do now, I'll just um, I'll go picture in picture and then I'll just shut it down for you. So, how's it going? Right, what I'm going to do is just try and sit here whilst I shut the jet down. I can't remember how to do it. Um, leave the flaps like that. Probably lights can come off. Genuinely, I'll, I'll, I'll get some check cards and I'll just make sure that I'm giving you some kind of gen. But really, the things you want to put off now, you can get rid of the pitot, obviously, and it's kicking go. And then before we do shut the jet down, radios can stay on, but you want to get rid of um, the fuel pump. And then this thing here, there's a gate there. Okay, and if you lift the gate, move the throttle forward ever so slightly, you can then shut down. It doesn't really shut all the fuel down, so what I've done is I've mapped the LP cock. So the FP goes off now, that can go off, and then the um, LP cock. This is either LP cock or it's eject. I don't know which one this is, genuinely. This could be quite funny. So I'm pressing the button now. Oh, it's maps. <laughs> what is going on? I mapped that. Right, now I've really, this is a gamble. We might be ejected here, guys. I've got six buttons on this joystick. Someone is sending me a new joystick, actually, the company, and I'm really grateful. Hopefully, I'll get them. I don't want to tell you now. Um, I'm going to press up another button, and we'll see what shuts down. Oh, you're joking. Now we've only got four. No, my goodness. This is really bad. Only three more. Oh, yes, yes. I was almost out of this airplane, wasn't I? Boo! Canopy open. A bit hot after all that. And then really what you're doing, winding down, taking everything's winding down. Uh, you trim that stick fully forward actually before you shut the jet down, oxygen can come off. All these, everything down here just shut down, you know what I mean? It's fine. Uh, leave the flats where they are. Pressures are down. Make sure the parking brake was on anyway. And then all you're doing is just taking the batteries off really. Probably missed a few things. Mass, fine. Bat one, bat two. All right guys, hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me know in the comments. I would like, if you, if you can subscribe, it really helps me with the subs. It really does, you know, because then YouTube drops this video in front of people like yourself. Um, I think we're putting it right over pretty soon. Who's flying in this crazy weather? Let's have a look, shall we? Can you see one? There's a lot more aircraft than there are normally here. Guys, if you, if you can subscribe, that'd be really great for me. And then uh, if you're interested in the live streams, hit that notification bell. Can I get a ding? And then, really, the rest of it, just leaving comments and just let me know what kind of content you want. This is a bit rough and ready, this one, guys. Um, I'll try and get it out soon. And if you're on Patreon, you are sponsoring on Patreon, this will drop a few days before it does on the YouTube channel, all right? So um, I'll keep it unlisted a couple of days. You can get to see it first, because you know that's my thanks for you guys um, sponsoring the channel, helping me out. And also, uh, I'll, I'll do some live chats to you guys as well. I'll try and even do like a proper live stream for you if you want, you know, see what you want. All right, guys, look, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Tim Davies, Fast Hit Performance.